Imagine getting out of your office or in, inside your home or arriving at your factory floor and greeted by a cheetah. Imagine the shock and horror on your face. Actually, this is not my figment of imagination. These kind of things are happening. You must have heard recently a cheetah loitered into a Maruti plant. This is not a standalone uh, incident. Incidents like these are happening for the last many years. You must have seen uh, Neil guys ravaging fields, uh, elephant herds stopping traffic in uh, national highway, pythons being found in people's courtyard. When these kind of things happen, people start blaming animals that they are a danger to their life. Fair enough, they are a danger to your life. But they are not at fault. We are at fault. Because our population is rising. We need more land to live and more land to feed our ourselves. In this, we are uh, cutting down forests at an alarming pace. Forests happen to be the habitat of these animals. So when they are packed in small parcels of forests and their numbers start going, they find that the food is less. And in search of food, they make small bands and they start moving to urban areas. And the moment they arrive in urban areas, there will be a conflict. These animals, they don't have mind. They have instincts. So the moment they find food, they go for it. But urban areas are equally disastrous for them also. They get killed because of traffic. They are shot by people. They are hunted down by human beings. Now this conflict is not an easy conflict. And this conflict will have no winners. In the end, humans can win because we have firepower. We can kill all of them. But once we kill all these animals, we too will be very poor because these animals are an important cog in the food chain, in the entire diversity chain. The thing is, what needs to be done? What happens is, Nilgai Imagine the case scenario that Nilgai walks into your home. You start shouting, Nilgai panics, runs out and hits a truck, dies. These small incidents, these kind of violent incidents can be brought down if we as a society decide that we are not going to uh, cut forests anymore. Because forest, whatever little forest is left in India is the last bastion of these uh, animals. First, we should take a conscious decision uh, to stop cutting uh, forests and then start regrowing some amount of forest in critical zones. Secondly, we should also understand that these animals have migratory patterns. They are driven by instincts. They move from one point to the other in search of food. And when we are creating our development plan, we should leave those migratory pattern, uh, migratory routes in a natural state as far as is possible. And whenever there is a situation where conflict can arrive, we should find ways and means and create protocols to decrease uh, our contact with these animals. They should be left in wild as much as possible. Third is, these animal groups, some of them, especially monkeys, have started living with us for a long period of time. We feed them for some religious purpose or we feed them to lessen our guilt that we are saving animals. But in both the cases, our concern is flawed because the kind of food we give them to eat is the food which is poisonous for them. It is toxic. They are, their systems are not meant to eat those food. They die young, they develop skin rashes, they develop other diseases and they are not living a happy life. In such a scenario, 
the idea should be to rehabilitate them back to their wild. I was in Bhutan recently and I saw very little uh, monkeys on the road. I asked why and they said royals have given an order not to feed monkeys on the road and the idea is this way they would be uh, forced to go back to wild and search their own food. They will be in a better position and man and human conflict, man and animal conflict will come down. I think it's a great idea because I was told that in last three years the population uh, of monkeys on the road in Bhutan has con come down considerably. This is one way to go about it. Thanks for watching.